Hi everyone, Rob here. So as the title of this video suggests, I'm going to talk about how to make cheap cell phone stabilization. Because the truth is, is that your hands are really shaky. Well, I know mine are, I'm betting yours are too. And so, if you take cell phone videos, they end up looking perhaps a little bit like this. That's pretty shaky. So, how can you fix this? Well, first, you have to get a cell phone with some form of image stabilization. Well, on the iPhone 4S, they actually have built-in image stabilization. In fact, the S, which supposedly stands for Siri, could also stand for stabilization, because that's also something that they incorporated into the 4S. And, of course, the 5 has image stabilization as well. It's actually built into it. It's not even an option. You can't turn it off or on. So if you use the basic camera that comes with it, there's image stabilization going on. It's their attempt to actually deal with your shaky hands. Um, if you use an Android phone, you can usually find a feature under the camera. At least if you put it in video mode, you'll find that there's an anti-shake feature in the options menu. Go and turn that on. That's the first step in improving the quality of your cell phone videos. Now, the second step is that you need to have some way of getting your hands as far away from the phone as possible. Two hands are better than one, and two hands that are far away from the phone are even better. So, how do you do this? Well, there's a lot of different stabilization rigs you can find online. Um, I'll put links all around here to different ones you can do. Um, but the general principle is this. I'm going to use this stick to demonstrate. If my phone is here in the middle, and I'm using one hand, you can see where it's still going to shake. If I'm using two hands, it becomes much more steady. All right? So the idea is to get it in a position where, it will, where your cell phone will be as steady as possible. Now, there are a couple of different ways I've seen people doing this, like the links that I've put around show. Um, there are different tricks people have come up with. Some are using PVC pipe to create frames to go around it. Some are even using steering wheels, or creating basically fake steering wheels, and using that as a way to create image stabilization, which of course works for a full video camera or a cell phone camera. But I was trying to come up with a way that your average person who didn't have any money to spend could possibly do this. So, how can it be done? Well, my first attempt, after looking around the house a little bit, was a coat hanger. Believe it or not, a coat hanger can work. And you can get these at the dollar store if you don't have one already. The coat hanger in question will look something like this. Okay? And because the idea is you're putting your hands again as far away as possible. So you can see my hands are on either side of this. You're probably wondering about these elastics. Well, if you can, get a coat hanger that has a little crossbar here. Because what will happen is your phone will end up sitting on this crossbar. All right? And while your phone is sitting on the crossbar, the, these two elastics will actually hold your phone into place. At least that's the theory, anyway. Now, your phone can be a little bit slippery, depending on the cover they use and such. So what you might want to do is you might want to have a third thick elastic band. This will go crosswise across the phone, go across the phone like this, and it will actually give your phone a little more grip so that these two elastics can hold on to it. So how does this look? Well, as you can see now, I'm, this is some footage I took using this rig. And it's a bit shaky. One problem that you can run into as you're holding it is that the elastics can actually give, depending on how tight your elastics are. And, and so you can end up with a little bit of shake from that. Also, you have to worry about whether the phone is actually sitting on the crossbar or not. And of course, you can't, you can't use the hook at the bottom for, for these shots. You have to use these, because if you use the hook at the bottom, you're, you know, it'll shake back and forth. So that's definitely not going to work. And also, you have to make sure the elastics are in a proper X pattern, so for maximum stabilization. So this is just a quickie way to stabilize. And it does work. It's better than working with no stabilization. But I did still find it lacking. So I was thinking, well, how else can I do this? What can I, what do I have that would let me um, get my hands as far away from it as possible, and create as stable an image as possible. Well, I looked around, and as I was rumbling through the closet, 
I came across this. This is a tube, paper tube, the kind that we used to have lightsaber battles with as kids, um, that uh, is used for Christmas wrapping or birthday gift wrapping, whatever. It's gift wrapping tube. This is what it's rounded. And yeah, as kids we usually use these to bonk you know, each other over the head with. But it actually has another function. If you can mount your camera on this, and you can put your hand at either end, it can actually be very, very stable. Of course, you have to have some place to put your phone, which it results in this. If you'll notice, I have cut a hole the size of my cell phone. I actually traced the cell phone pattern out with my pen, and then used a knife to cut through, cut this very snug, and snug is the important part, because it needs to be snug, because it needs to be tight, um, hole. And then I could just put my phone right down in the hole, and once my phone is right down in the hole, I suddenly have a stabilization rig, and so I can hold my hold at either end. It's actually kind of nice because I can pivot up, I can pivot down, I can pivot left, I can right. It's kind of like your like an airplane almost. And I found this is extremely stable, like extremely stable. I was in fact shocked by how good a quality stability I got off of this thing. Now of course it won't last forever, and it does have one other disadvantage I should warn you about. Because your phone is inside this area, the microphone on your phone is probably also inside this area, which means that all the sounds sound like it's coming from a distant tunnel or something like that. So that's a bit of a problem. So the problem is you can use this for capturing video, but it's a little tricky for capturing audio because it's going to sound crappy. But it is still good enough for you to match the audio from the phone up with audio that you take from an external recorder. And in fact, in general, I always recommend people who are recording using their phone, or actually even any video camera, use an external audio source. Capture your audio from another source, like get one of these Zoom recorders, or even have another iPhone nearby, or something like that. This segment that you're watching right now is actually being recorded on an iPhone, so you can actually hear what the audio quality of the phone is. I'm in a small room, so there's a bit of echo and such, but generally you can hear what the quality of the iPhone is. It's actually not that bad. It should be good. I mean, after all, your phone is designed to take sound in and provide the best quality sound, right? So why wouldn't it be good for recording audio? But so would you generally want to use two phones? have one nearby for sound, and then use this as the actual uh, video taker. You can come up with whatever other rigs you, you know, want to. Um, one suggestion that I have, as I've shown you, this is a... Uh, I've just got the hole here, but one modification I actually intend to make is I intend to cut a little window here. I intend to cut a little window here on the tube next time I try this because, not for sound, so I can actually see the whole picture, because the other problem is the half of your phone is sunk into the tube, so you're only seeing the top half of the picture. So you kind of have to guess a little bit, and it's very easy to throw yourself off in squaring the picture and having it exactly on. Also, most phones have some kind of feature where it allows you to touch it, hold it for a sec, and it'll lock focus and white balance on that point, and it's tough to do that if half your screen is covered. So that's an issue. Oh yeah, about one more thought about the tube, which I'm amazed how well this thing works, considering it's literally like, almost zero cost. In my case, it was literally zero cost, because we just bought it for gift wrapping. Um, is that the longer tube is better. You could use a paper towel roll to do this. But if you were to try something like this, I would actually more recommend that you take, the, take two paper towel rolls tape them together in the middle, and then cut something out from the middle or something like that. Because the farther you can get your hands away from that middle, the better. And so this is my no-cost, super low-budget uh, ideas for cell phone stabilization. If you have other ideas, please write to me or link to this video, because I'm always looking for new ideas to help cell phone filmmakers produce better quality video. Supposedly, the next generation iPhone will have some kind of actual physical stabilization built in, where the actual camera will actually be moving a little bit to actually compensate for you using the accelerometer and other stuff. Um, if you're watching this, say, a year from now, you already know this, because you probably already have one of those cameras that's doing this. But for now, anyway, this really helps. And even with one of those cameras with it built in, it will still make things even more steady. 
One other thing you can do with these kind of uh, cameras to make things more steady is to get software that's specifically designed for filming. Don't just use the app that's built into the phone. So, for example, on the iPhone, there's an app called Filmic Pro, which is meant for higher quality uh, filmmaking. You might consider getting that. It's just a couple bucks. And it actually has its own image stabilization software built into it, which I found was a little bit better than the iPhone standard image stabilization that comes with it. Well, the standard camera, I mean. So, anyway, so hopefully this helps you. And if it does, let me know. If it doesn't, or if you've got some suggestions or ideas, or you want to do the, your own, also let me know so I can pass the word along. Talk to you later. Bye. So, as an extra bonus, I just wanted to point this out. This video was actually recorded using this Starbucks cup as a tripod. As kind of a makeshift, quickie tripod. You can do this with pretty much any paper cup. And what you do is, you actually use a pen to draw out where you want your lines on the side to be. Um, very similar to the tube that I presented. So you make it, and then you use a scissors or a knife like these ones, which are the ones I actually used. And what you're doing is, you basically cut holes on either side so that your phone will fit in. And remember, since the camera's phone is on the end, your, your camera will be out here. So, and it basically turns into instant stabilizer. Now you might wonder, why did I cut this hole? Well, I cut this hole so that I could actually see through where the camera was looking. Make sense? By cutting this hole and then I had a mirror behind it, I could actually see myself and I could use that mirror to direct and make sure that I was in the frame and everything. I mean, I suppose if I wanted to, I could have uh, walked around the table and uh, set it up from behind, but this just made things a little easier. So if you really need a quickie desktop tripod or desktop stabilizer, you know, something to just hold your camera, ta-da, here we go. You can use a McDonald's cup, Starbucks cup, paper cup, doesn't matter. A pair of scissors and one of these things and maybe a pen, all you need. So there's your extra bonus stabilizer tip. Have fun! Bye!